Hi, I'm Christina from Unstable Games, and I'm here to teach you how to play Casting Shadows. Casting Shadows is an immersive tabletop game for two to four players that takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play. During the game, you'll travel around a magical world, collecting resources, learning new spells, and battling other players. The last one left standing after the Supernatural Showdown wins the game. I'm going to start by telling you about the setup and gameplay, then I'll spend some time telling you more about the different resources and card types you'll encounter throughout the game. So let's jump right in. To set up the game, have each player choose a character and take their corresponding player board and meeple. Your player board is double-sided with one side representing your character's base form and the other side representing their shadow form. On the right side of your player board, you'll find a wheel that serves as your shadow energy tracker. Throughout the game, you'll have the opportunity to collect shadow energy by absorbing shadow fragments. On the left side of your player board, you'll find a wheel that serves as your HP tracker. Each time you take damage, rotate the wheel down by the amount of damage you took. If an effect allows you to gain HP, rotate the wheel up. And if at any point your HP reaches zero, you're immediately eliminated from the game. So watch your health carefully. At the start of the game, make sure your character's base form is face up, the HP trackers have full HP, and the shadow trackers are at zero. Also, be sure to leave some space to the right of your player board for your spell book, where you'll collect spells, counter spells, and resource cards throughout the game. You'll be able to collect a maximum of five cards in your spell book. If you need to free up space, move a card from your spell book to the discard pile. Now, it's time to set up the map using your hex tiles. Start by placing the ancient rune hex tile on the table to create the center of the map. Then, place the desert and volcano hex tiles on opposite sides of the ancient rune. Finally, place each character's home hex tile on the map. Now it's time to prepare the decks. First, shuffle the counterspell deck and place it face down next to the desert hex tile. Next, shuffle the main deck and flip one card face up next to each other hex tile around the perimeter of the map. Place the remaining main deck cards face down within reach of all players, and make sure you leave space next to the main deck for a discard pile. Next, shuffle the companion deck and place it face down on the table within reach of all players. Flip the top three cards face up and place them near the map. This is your companion portal, from which you can summon a shadowy sidekick to join you in the game. Place all of the resource tokens and dice in a pile so everyone can reach them. Then. Place your meeple on your character's home hex tiles. Now you're ready to play Casting Shadows. The youngest player will go first, and play proceeds clockwise. Each turn consists of three phases. In phase one, you'll roll the five resource dice to form your resource pool, which contains your resources for this turn. If you start your turn on a hex tile that grants a particular resource, add the corresponding token to your resource pool. Now that you have your resources, it's on to phase two. You get four action points to spend during this phase, and there are six possible actions you can take on your turn. Travel, collect, refresh, reroll, protect, and cast. Each action costs one action point. You can perform the same action more than once on your turn if you still have action points to spend. You do not have to spend all four action points each turn, but unused action points don't roll over to your next turn. Travel lets you move your character from your current hex tile to any adjacent hex tile. Collect lets you move a spell, counter spell, or resource card from next to your current hex tile to your spell book by spending the required resources shown in the card's collection cost. Some cards also require you to spend a lower level spell card from your spell book as part of their collection cost. Resource cards do not have a collection cost, so you can add them to your spell book just by spending an action point. After you collect a spell or resource card, immediately replace it with the top card from the main deck. Refresh lets you move the card from your current hex tile to the discard pile and replace it with the top card from the main deck. Reroll lets you choose any number of rolled resource dice and roll them again. But you cannot reroll cursed crystals. Protect lets you remove one cursed crystal from your resource pool. As a heads up, you'll take one damage at the end of your turn for any cursed crystals left in your resource pool. Finally, cast means you'll spend resources to use a spell card effect from your spell book. You can only use each spell card effect once per turn. After you've spent your action points, it's time for phase three. In this phase, 
you'll clean up your resource pool and end your turn. First, absorb any shadow fragments remaining in your resource pool by moving your shadow tracker up by the remaining amount. If your shadow tracker is full and you are in your base form, you may immediately transform into shadow form. When you flip over your player board, make sure your shadow tracker is set to zero and your HP is at the same as it was before you transformed. As soon as you transform into your shadow form, you can immediately choose a companion card from the companion portal and add it to your spellbook. You'll only get one companion for the whole game, so choose wisely. Your companion doesn't count towards the max of five cards in your spellbook. Before ending your turn, you must take one damage for each cursed crystal remaining in your resource pool. Don't say we didn't warn you. After adjusting your HP, remove the cursed crystals from your resource pool. Finally, remove the rest of your resources from your resource pool to conclude your turn. You'll continue taking turns until one player is left standing. Will you vanquish all your enemies, or will you be left in the shadows? Now that we've gone through an overview of gameplay, let's talk a bit more in depth about resources. The faces of each resource die display the four different resources in the game. Gems, orbs, shadow fragments, and cursed crystals. Gems and orbs can be either red or blue. If you see a purple gem or orb, you can choose to use that resource as either red or blue. Shadow fragments let you collect and cast powerful spells. If you hang on to them until the end of your turn, you can absorb their shadow energy and move your shadow tracker up by one, bringing you closer to your shadow form. If you're already in your shadow form, you can continue absorbing shadow energy to unleash your ultimate ability. And the best part is, you can use this ability during phase two of your turn without spending an action point as long as you have enough shadow energy. Each time you use your ultimate ability, reset your shadow tracker to zero so you can start charging up again. Cursed crystals may look like gems, but they're deceptively dangerous. If you roll any cursed crystals, you can use a protect action to remove one from your resource pool. Throughout the game, you'll encounter multiple types of cards, so let's break them down one at a time. We'll start with attack spell cards. Attack spells let you deal damage by spending specific resources. Some attack spell cards let you spend more resources to deal more damage. If a card says, spend up to three red gems to deal three, five, or six damage, you'll deal three damage if you spend one red gem, five damage if you spend two red gems, or six damage if you spend three red gems. On each attack spell card, you'll find a rage indicator, which shows where you can target enemies with your attack relative to your current hex tile. If the card targets an enemy in range, you can choose any player that's within range of your attack. If it targets a hex tile in range, you can choose any hex tile within range of your attack, and your attack will deal damage to every enemy on that hex tile. Conversion spell card effects allow you to transform resources into other resources for the rest of your turn. Some conversion spell card effects even let you add resources to your resource pool. Resource cards allow you to add additional resources to your resource pool. To use a resource card in your spellbook, move that card to the discard pile, then add the corresponding resource tokens to your resource pool. Using a resource card does not cost an action point. Keep resource cards in your spellbook until you are ready to spend them, and remember that once you use a resource card, you must spend the resources before the end of your turn. Otherwise, you'll lose them. Counter spell cards allow you to surprise your enemies. They can only be collected from the desert hex, and collecting one costs an action point, a gem of any color, and an orb of any color. When you collect a counter spell card, take the top card of the counter spell deck, look at it, and place it in your spellbook face down. Make sure nobody else sees it until you're ready to use it so that it can be a nasty surprise to whoever crosses you. Each counterspell card lists a trigger that tells you when you're allowed to use it. Save it for the opportune moment to turn the tide of the game in your favor. The last type of card, and my personal favorite, are companion cards. You get to choose your companion when you transform into shadow form. Each companion's effect is unique, and after you've summoned your companion, it can't be destroyed or removed from your spellbook. With all the possible combinations of characters, companions, and spells for your spellbook, you'll get to test countless strategies and employ different playstyles each time you play Casting Shadows. I hope this walkthrough has been helpful for you. Now go out there and explore this new mystical world for yourself.